number four. Look at the coordinate grid below. What is the approximate length segment A to B? So I've got A, I've got B. I'm just going to go ahead and connect those. And then from there, I can make a right triangle. Like I said, this whole test is French. No, this whole test is Pythagorean theorem. So we're looking for this, right? That's our C. That's our diagonal side. It's our longest side. So we need A and we need B. So I'm going to go through and I'll count these squares to get a side length. So one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four. So five squared plus four squared equals C squared. There's that formula again. Okay, so five squared plus four squared, and then we want to take the square root of it. So I get 6.403 and 6.4 would be rounded. Number nine, triangle PQR is graphed on the coordinate group below. What is the length of PR in units? So PR, that's my diagonal side, that's my longest side, so I know that's my C. So I need to find the lengths of the other two sides of A and B. So I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So A was 9, so 9 squared plus 7 squared equals C squared. Okay, so let's take that square root. 9 squared plus 7 squared. 11.4, and there we go. Number 10, when two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, which of the following angle relationships have congruent or same angles? So two parallel lines cut by a transversal. So corresponding angles, remember that's the same angle on the same side of the transversal. So in this case, in my little terrible picture, something like that, actually. Let's make this a little bit more clear. So two parallel lines cut by a transversal. So corresponding would be those two sides, or these two, or these two. It's the same angle on the same side of the transversal, basically. So that is true. Those would be the same. Alternate exterior. So that would be out here, since it's exterior of the parallel lines, and alternate, so they're opposite of each other. And then alternate interior, same idea. If they're alternate, they're going to be the same measurement, except in this case, interior inside of the parallel lines. So all of those would be true. They would all be congruent angles to each other. Number 11. Find the measure of angle 8 if angle 4 is 57 degrees. Okay, so one thing you can look at, see this almost as two separate pieces. So this top part and this bottom part are basically duplicates of each other. So you can see if you do it like that, 4 and 8 are the same measure. Okay, they're corresponding. It's the same angle measure on the same side of the transversal. So that means our answer should be the same measure, 57. Number 12 in the diagram below, use parallel lines cut by transversal. Based on the information in the diagram, which the following statement is true. A says angle 4 and angle 1 are complementary. Complementary means they add up to be 90 degrees. Well, 4 and 1 are acute and obtuse and they're on the straight line so they should add up to be 180. 90 degrees would be like that. These guys are on a straight line so it can't be A. <clears throat> B says angle 1 and angle 7 are congruent. That's what that little symbol means. And 6 and 7 are supplementary so they add up to be 180. So angle 1 plus angle 6 would be 180 degrees. Uh, 
12 looks true. Six and seven are on the same line. You've got obtuse, you've got acute. They should be supplementary, so we'll put a star. And let's look at C, says angle one and angle seven are the same, they're congruent, and five and eight are congruent to each other. Not true. You've got an acute angle, you've got an obtuse angle. These two together should add up to be 180. They're not the same measurement, so bye. And then D says, angle one and angle seven are congruent. That's true. Angle five and angle two are congruent. So one plus five should be 180 degrees. No, several things wrong. Five and two, not the same angle measurement. You've got acute and obtuse. So you have an interior and an exterior. Angle one and angle five would be the same measure. So these could not add up to be 180. They would be the same measurement. So B is the only one that would work for us. Number 13. I'll extrude the diagram below based on the diagram which statement is true. So we know all triangles add up to be 180 degrees. So right now in our interior triangle we've got 37 degrees and 130 degrees. So to figure out what X is going to be we want to figure out what this angle is going to be. So we take those interior angles, 130 and 37, add them together. We get 167. And so take 180, which should be all triangles, and subtract what we already have. So we get 13. So this tiny little angle over here is 13 degrees. So we want to see what could X be? If these are on a straight line, we have an acute angle and an obtuse. So these two together should be 180 again. So 180 minus the tiny little angle we already know, and we get 167. So our exterior angle, 167. So let's look at these answer choices and see what we can find. A says the sum of the measures of the interior and exterior angles have a triangle of a triangle is always 360. Now, the sum of interior or exterior angles is always 180. B, the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle angle C is less than the sum of the measures of the two non-adjacent interior angles of the triangle 130 and 37. Well, we determined that the exterior angle is 167, and adding these two interior together was 167. So they're actually the same. They're not less than anything. C, the sum of the measures of the interior and exterior angles of a triangle is always 180. So it's saying adding all of these together and the exterior should be 180 degrees. No. That would not work. The interior will be 180, and this one interior and exterior would be 180, but together, all together, not going to be 180. It would be more than that. D, the measure of an exterior angle of triangle angle C, which we're saying was X, is equal to the sum of the measures of the two non-adjacent interior angles of the triangle measure of angle 130 degrees and the measure 37. That is true. They both came out to be 167. Number 14, triangle ABC and triangle EFD are shown below. Based on the given information, the triangles determine if triangle ABC is similar to EFD. So when we're talking about similar shapes, we can do like we did before when we had similar shapes and we would compare the actual angles, like the different sides. So I'm going to label ABC as 1, 2, 3, like we've done before, and EFD 1, 2, 3. That way we can see if A is congruent or corresponding to E, if B and F are congruent, and C and D. <clears throat> so ABC 1, 2, 3, and EFD. E is 1, F is 2, Three is the D. Okay. Again, all triangles add up to be 180. 
So we've got 60 and 40, 60 and 40, which would be 100. So 180 minus 100, 80 is our missing side. So if you look, if you look and see, so A, we measured, or we labeled as angle one. If we come over here and look at one, it's the same degree. So those are both equal. Same thing with two. We determined it was 80 degrees, two is 80 degrees over here, 40 degrees and 40 degrees. Okay, so they are gonna be similar, but we gotta find that answer. So triangles ABC and EFD are similar because of two corresponding angle pairs and two triangles are congruent, the third pair of corresponding angles is also congruent. Well, so far, so good, that is true. We've got 80 for both of these missing sides. They all add up to be 180. All of those side lengths would have to be the same, and that's true. B, triangles ABC and EFD are not similar. I'm gonna stop there because they are similar, so it can't be B. C, ABC and EFD are similar because their interior angles add up to be 180. That's true for both. That is true for both, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they would be similar. They're similar because their specific angle measures were the exact same. This could add up to be, all triangles add up to be 180. So this could have been completely different numbers, still been 180, and looked nothing like this triangle. And D says A, B, C, and E, F, D are not similar. So it's got to be A. Okay, number 15, in each diagram, line R is parallel to line S, and line T intersects R and S. So based on the given diagrams, which statement about the value of X in the diagram below is true. So let's look and see. We're looking for the value of X. And if you notice, if you have an angle measurement, the angle directly across from it, that's terrible, directly across from it, is going to be the same. Those are vertical angles. And like I said earlier, this down here, this whole bottom part is just a duplicate of this. So if you know these two are the same, then these two are the same. So that means all four of them are the same. So A says the value of X cannot be determined from the given pattern. Well, not true. We can determine it. Even if... It was asking for one of the different angles. You can always subtract from 180 and get your answer. So A is bad. B, the value of X is 162 because all of the labeled angles are congruent or the same. That is pretty true. C, the value of X is 155 because each angle shown in the pattern measures 155. Okay, no, that is, this is just an example. <laughs> So don't let that throw you off. We're looking at this guy. So no. D, the value of X is 18 because each X angle and the given angle measuring 162 are supplementary. So 162 degrees plus 18 degrees is 180 degrees. That would be true had these X's not been placed where they were because these all add up or these are all the same angle measure. So B.